Good morning, guys. This is Dr. Liu with another episode of Derm Path Made Easy. And today we're going to be talking about morpheiform basal cell carcinomas. This is in the uh, challenging three differentials between uh, desmoplastic trichoepithelioma, which is the one that people most commonly confuse with this. Um, desmoplastic syringoma can be confused with this and occasionally um, microcystic adnexal carcinoma as well. So approaching this lesion, um, this from a low power perspective, you can see that there are no uh, horn pseudocysts or any kind of follicular, obvious follicular structures. Um, instead, we see these sort of narrow cords and single cells that penetrate quite deeply associated with some kind of inflammatory infiltrate down here. Now, these lesions clinically will look like an expanding scar and oftentimes uh, perineural uh, involvement can be seen, so they can be painful. So if we go to higher power here, you can see that superficially you may have some structures, and this may just be like, an, you know, sort of a hair bulb, not a, actually a part of the tumor, but you can occasionally see things that resemble sort of eccrine or acrosyringeal type epithelium. Um, and on superficial biopsies, you know, some, it, it could be pretty easy to mistaken this from a syringoma. But as we look through it, you realize that uh, these tumor island, these tumor cores are literally one, two cell layers thick, and it could be really sneaky. Like these are just tumor cells in here. Um, differentiating this from a trichoep. If you remember from the trichoep from Wednesday, we saw, um, first of all, the horn pseudocyst with the calcifications. Um, and in the desmoplastic, in the, in the cord-like growth pattern, it was usually a little wider than this. And oftentimes it had that sort of fibrostroma, if you remember it, that was CD3040 positive. The fibrostroma would be clefting typical, similarly to what you would see in a regular old trichoet. But this one, there's really not much clefting at all. Uh, and this is different from typical basal cell carcinomas. And, um, oftentimes you can find mitotic figures, um, but I, I, to be honest, I oftentimes it can be hard and sometimes you can use surrogate things like apoptotic bodies, you know, um, that, that can be a useful finding as well as uh, perineural invasion, uh, which I don't believe I've found in this tumor, but there are some suspicious areas. Um, okay. So again, there are no horn pseudocysts. You can see very thin, sort of small, single cell, the two cell layer thick, almost single filing, or, or uh, uh, in, you know, kind of an arrangement of a single line, like structures. Um, these things can commonly be involving nerve and uh, very little, uh, any kind of, um, retraction artifact that you would typically see in a basal cell carcinoma. <clears throat> These are in older people, typically on the cheek or, uh, sorry, typically on anywhere on the head and neck. And if you remember from Monday, CD34 positive, um, CD34 will be positive in trichoepithelioma stroma, but be negative in basal cell carcinomas. BCL2 is another common used marker. Um, that will be positive diffusely through the tumor islands of basal cell carcinoma, but only on the periphery of trichoepitheliomas. CK20, a Merkel cell um, uh, you know, you know, marker, are commonly found in trichoeps, but usually negative in basal cell carcinomas. Um, and I think that's it. Thanks, guys. This, if this has helped you at all, please like, subscribe, and share this with somebody that you think would help. Have a good one. Until next time.